Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another visual effects tutorial. This time we're going to talk about how to create a flag. And the reason why I'm creating this is because uh, a lot of people have been requesting it. And I have already a similar tutorial where it you can create like um, a basketball net and then kind of create an animation with it. But I think a flag will also help understanding how to use end cloth. So let's start off with just a basic cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it up so that it works really well, just like a regular pole. And in my poly inputs over here to the right, I'm going to grab my height and middle mouse and drag into perspective window just to give it a little bit of geometry. Go ahead and center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformation. What we're going to do next is create our flag. So just a regular plane, just scale it, rotate it 90 degrees, and then we'll move it up. So the thing about end cloth is that we really need to make sure that it has enough geometry for it to bend and flex. So for example, right now this seems pretty good, but really I don't think it's going to be enough geometry, but I'll just demonstrate what it looks like. So again, let's center the pivot, delete the history, freeze the transformation. I'm going to call this my flag geo. And under effects, make sure you're under effects. Let's go to end cloth and make this into create end cloth. And automatically it creates a nucleus and an end cloth attribute. So let's give ourselves a little bit more time. Rewind and play. And you're going to notice that it's going to fall. So for the flag to be attached to the pole, what we need to do is go to right click, go to our vertices and select our vertices and then shift select the pole. The pole. And under and cloth, I'm sorry, and constraint, you're going to see something that's called point to surface. Now, you know, you did it right when you're going to see these little dynamic constraints attached to it. And you also have a dynamic constraint in your outliner. Let's go ahead and rewind again, press play. And you're going to notice that the cloth is now falling, but also notice that the blocks, that ge the geometry is a little blocky. So that was a lot of steps to just kind of demonstrate that, you know, you need more geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and undo. So control Z all the way until it's no longer has this end cloth nucleus. And now it's back to its original thing. So I'm actually rewinding all the way so I can go back to my inputs. Um, and then I can increase my subdivision width and height. So I'm selecting these two, or if you'd like, just go ahead and start with a new plane, middle mouse and drag, and just kind of increase the quality of your, mesh. This is going to make everything, this is going to help um, the flag look a little bit more realistic. So again, let's delete everything. Again, I'm going to relabel flag geo. One more time, end cloth, create end cloth. Let's go ahead and right click vertex, select this vertices, shift, select the pole and constraint point to surface. Rewind, press play. And now we're getting a lot of nice little wrinkles. So that's awesome. Also notice that the pole seems to be, the material is actually going through the pole. So I'm not a big fan of that. So let's select this. Let's go to end cloth and make it into a passive collider. A passive collider means that the cloth is going to evaluate this pole as it starts to do its dynamics. So therefore it, when it hits it, it actually reacts to it instead of going through it. All right, so, so far so good. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at the nucleus. I'm going to continue pressing play so we can watch the situation, the cloth and the simulation. So right now the, fla the flag is, has a 9.8 gravity and it's going on a negative direction. And, uh, but what I wanted to show you was the wind speed. The wind speed is actually a lot of fun. If I start increasing the wind speed, you're going to notice that my flag is going to start flapping in the wind. And the higher the wind speed, the more the flag is going to flap. So let's go ahead and just kind of call it a nice, normal, windy day. All right. That looks really nice. Um, air density just means like how much dense do you want the air to be? So do you want it to be, you know, just a little bit calmer or do you want it to go ahead and be dense? Notice that there's a, uh, a couple of things that happen right there in the end cloth. So this isn't perfect, but at least it, uh, it works. So once everyone and play, that's going to go away. And we also have wind direction. So for example, if I wanted to change my wind direction to let's say a negative one, the wind will now blow the other way. And, uh, and then of course, wind noise, I'm going to bring this back to one and wind noise means that do you want the noise to be a little bit more 
uh, add a little bit more of that unpredictability as it starts to, instead of being a constant wind, maybe you want it to kind of fall a little bit and rise a little bit, gives it a little bit more realism. So there you go. You will never have to animate a flag ever again. Um, and it's also really realistic and really cool. So now that you guys know how to create a flag with end cloth really quickly and a lot of fun, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, plus side for Academic Phoenix Plus. I'm going to show you guys how to assign a shader to this and uh, have a little fun with this. So let's right click assign a new material. And of course, I'm going to choose Arnold and AI Standard Surface. I'm going to attach a color to it. So let's crank this up to 100% color for my base. Let's go to File. Go in this little folder and I already have something called the Horde flag. So just a little fun. Press the number six to see the texture. And there you go. So now I'm going to add a light. So let's go to Arnold Light Physical Sky. And let's see what that looks like. So it's looking pretty good. Rewind, play. We can kind of watch this kind of simulate. It's probably better. Notice how glossy it is. Not a big fan of that. So let's go ahead and select our object here. Let's grab our standard surface here. I'm going to recall it. This is going to be whore just to kind of help me separate things. And let's increase the roughness so it's not so shiny. There we go. All right. So now if we go to the other side, you're going to notice that the horde's on the other side. By the way, for people that don't know what the symbol is, it's the horde symbol for World of Warcraft, just in case. But uh, let's open up the Hiver Shape because we all know that if you play World of Warcraft, you probably play both characters. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, graph the network. So right click, graph your network. And I'm going to show you guys how to use an AI two sided shader. So if you type in two, so if hit tab, type in two, there's the AI two sided. I'm going to take this, this horde, click on this, but middle mouse and drag it to the front. So now we need to attach the Alliance flag. So let's hit tab. This is going to be another AI surface, standard surface. I'm going to call this Alliance. Go to Color, File, Folder, Alliance. Now that I have my Alliance flag, I'm going to select, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select my two sided shader, middle mouse, and drag this shader into the back. So what happens is that the front is going to look like the horde, but the back is going to look like a lion. So we might need to render it to be able to see it. And the reason why it doesn't show up, it's because I'm going to assign an existing material because I haven't assigned my 2Y sided shader. So selector geometry, right click, assign an existing material, which is AI two sided. And now we'll be able to see what it looks like. So here's the front and then here is the back. It's kind of glossy, same story. So let's mess around with our alliance shader. Uh, if you want to graph this again, it might be better. Let's go ahead and right click on our AI two sided shader and then graph the network so it's nice and clean. Select the alliance one and let's increase the roughness a little bit so it's not so shiny. So now we have a nice alliance and horde. So it really depends who you want to play with or who do you think is best. Leave your comment below if you're an Alliance or Horde, but in reality, we all know that all of us have characters for each, but we all, we, all, we kind of lean on one or the other. So I'm gonna press play. I'm gonna watch the simulation. It's not gonna be able to render very quickly. What I'm gonna do is uh, grab my nucleus here and we're gonna watch this. I'm gonna need to stop it just so I can grab the nucleus and see the attributes if it lets me. Stop, all right, play. And then I'm going to kind of have a little fun here. Um, press play here too. We're going to watch this be simulated. And then what I'm going to do is change the wind direction. So right now we're Horde. Or are you? Alliance. All right. I just wanted to show you that. I thought it was kind of fun. Hopefully uh, that taught you a couple of things, such as uh, how to... Um, create uh, a flag very quickly and also use your AI two-sided so that you can have a little bit of fun. Let me know if you guys found this helpful and uh, by leaving a comment below, 
All right, everybody. Thank you so much for listening. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Do not hesitate to leave a message below. And uh, also don't forget to like and share. If you find these uh, tutorials helpful, it'll be great if you could share them with, share them with your friends and uh, whoever you think will need something like this. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you. And I will see you next time.